Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration for taking you out safely today and bringing you back safely. For he alone deserves to be praised. He alone deserves to be adored. He alone deserves to be magnified. There is none like unto our God. The only one that blesses and added no sorrow. Appreciate him for safety. Appreciate him for protection. Appreciate him for provision. Appreciate him for taking you out safely and bringing you back safely. Appreciate him for joining mercy. Appreciate him because he alone is in charge. He alone is in charge. He alone is the controller of time and season. Don't give him glory. Thank him for the partaking dips. Even the vessels that the Lord have been using to bless us. Let's thank him for the way I've been sending to us. Let's thank him for his plan and purpose for our life. Let's thank him for the thought that he took it to us, all, thought of peace and not of evil, that will give us expected end. Let's give him glory. Let's give him glory. Let's give him glory. Thank you for our gathering tonight will not be in vain. Our gathering here tonight will not be in vain. Just bless his holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. I just want to say a better amen. I want you to lift up your two hands to heaven tonight. Even as we take just three prayer points very quickly. Lift up your hands to heaven and say, Father, you can do better. Say, Father, whatever it will take, whatever it will cause for the heaven over my life, the heaven over my family, the heaven over my ministry, the heaven over my business, the heaven over my career, whatever it will take for that heaven to remain permanently open, whatever it will take for the heaven over me not to be shut, oh God, my Father, do it in my life tonight that I will forever be under open heaven. I will forever be under open heaven. It is only the one that is under open heaven that we experience the rain and the showers of blessing. If your heavens are short, your rain cannot fall. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Talk to the Almighty God. Masuka baleba kashen tele. Zabla ekete gaba kasun talimama. Zelege de kaka. Is somebody praying tonight? Pray that the heaven over you and your household will forever remain open. Whatever it will take, whatever it will cause, God will cause the heaven over you to remain forever open. That nothing will close the heaven over your life. Nothing will shut the heaven over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lift up your voice and lift up your hands to heaven and say, Father, we commit your church into your hand. Let your heaven forever be open over your church. Lord, the heaven over your church, let it not be closed. Can you go ahead and talk to the Almighty God? When the heaven over the church is open, members are blessed, destinies are transformed, breakthroughs are recorded, miracle signs and wonder are the order of the day. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. Because on the day of Pentecost, as soon as the heaven opened over the church, there was massive outpouring of his spirit. Can you cry to God that the heaven over this, this church will use each other as a point of contact? The heaven over this church will forever remain open. That there will be massive outpouring of the spirit of God over the church. That the church will witness revival. The church will experience revival. That destinies will be transformed in the mighty name of Jesus, that no one, no one, no one, no one in his church will remain the same. Brother, can you cry to the mighty God? Mazo kapali ba kashen te lima ma. Oh, mare ba 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 ba. Zalekeche gazuka prodo kasan talia. Regede ga 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 ga. Daddy, rain the heaven over your church. Daddy, rain the heaven, rain the heaven, rain the heaven. And let that be massive outpouring of your spirit. Ha ha. Let there be outbreak of revival. Masu kalaboshka. Let signs, wonders, miracles become order of the day in your church. Hey, kali gada baba. Rigade kete gas are no hinder. Let's cry to the Almighty God that the atmosphere will be conducive. The atmosphere will be cordial. 
by open heaven so that prayers are answered without delay blessings are received without delay go ahead talk to the almighty god that god will not permit the heaven over his church to be closed thank you mighty father in jesus mighty name we have prayed beloved i was having a discussion with some people yesterday and they were talking about what is happening in our nation that things are getting worse things are getting shocked up the economy is being suffocated even the life of citizens are also being suffocated it's as if we are under close heaven at another forum today the same thing repeat itself people were just exclaiming and lamenting about all that is happening around but we know these are signs that they are restraining these are signs that the heaven over the nation is closed particularly as a result of wickedness and atrocities and, uh, and all kinds of evil that is being perpetrated by the country praise the Lord by the citizens of the country not just the leaders even at our own level as individuals you could see wickedness when you are driving the traffic you could see wickedness when your car that carry you, you could see wickedness. If you get to the market, talk to the Almighty God. Ask the Lord to put an end to all the wickedness and the atrocity going on all over the land, all over the nation, in high places. Let's talk to the Almighty God. Mazuka Balabaka Santa Limama, Gelebra Santa Lia. As we have bad leaders, we have bad followers. We as citizens are almost like bad followers. Yekato Gazi Kalebranda, let us for mercy over our nation. Let us for mercy over our nation. Oh, let us for mercy over our nation. Masuka Palele, Rubraka Daga Gaga Gaga, that they rend the heaven over Nigeria, oh God. Gazi Kala, rend the heaven and heal our land. Lord, rend the heaven and heal our land. Father, rend the heavens and heal our land. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. And so, mighty and everlasting Father, we are grateful to you. You are such a good God. You are such a faithful God. Thank you for your faithfulness towards us. Thank you for not abandoning us. Thank you for not denying us. Thank you for not forsaking us. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for the path digging deeps. Thank you for the word you've been sending to us. Thank you for the vessels you've been using. Thank you for granting us understanding. Thank you for your word that is not scarce in our midst. That they are set our thanks in the name of Jesus. Gracious Father, we are gathered here tonight to learn at your feet. Lord, grant us understanding heart in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the good teacher. Please tonight, oh God, Daddy, teach us yourself in the name of Jesus. Mighty and everlasting Father, as a vessel, I humble myself before you and I say, Lord, take my mouth of clay and use it to your glory in the name of Jesus. That your word will come expressly tonight and there shall be a performance for the purpose you are sending out your word tonight in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we pray for your church. Daddy, reign the heaven over your church. That righteousness may reign. That there might be massive outpouring of your spirit. That revival may break out. Daddy, reign the heavens. Mighty Father, reign the heaven that there might be instant answer prayers. Reign the heaven, oh God, that every life, every man, every woman represented in your church, Lord, they will manifest your glory in the name of Jesus. We pray for our nation, Nigeria. Mighty Father, please have mercy. Lord, have mercy. With all the atrocity and the wickedness going on in high places in this nation, that they have mercy. In your mercy, reign the heavens. Reign the heavens over our land. Reign the heaven over our nation. And let righteousness reign. Reign the heaven, O God, and put an end, O God, to all the evil befalling us in the name of Jesus. That they do something about our nation. Do something about our leaders. Do something about the followers. And as we go into your word tonight, that they speak to us. As many of your children that are on the way, oh God, for their sake, clear the traffic. Hasten their footsteps. And as by the time we are living, oh God, may we be glad that we came. Thank you, mighty Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. I told the blog, God, say it better. Amen. 
Can you jam your hands together for the Almighty God? We are all most welcome in Jesus' name. Let's please be seated in His presence as we continue our series, Turning on the Showers of Blessing, Part 3. Turning on the Showers of Blessing, Part 3. We more or less like took the Part 2B last Tuesday. Our Bible outline remains the same. We say, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. In the course of this study, we were made to know that when you talk about all round blessing, that they are in three categories. Category one, physical blessings. Category two, soulish blessings. And category three, spiritual blessings. Praise the Lord. So we spend time to look at what physical blessings are, what soulish blessings are, and what spiritual blessings are. And we told us that of all the blessing, that it begins with what? The soulish blessing. That when your soul is regenerated, you are properly positioned even to harness or harvest your physical blessings. And then you can also be able to turn on your spiritual blessing. Those are some of the things that we looked at. Uh, we don't have time. If not so, I will start asking us, just like we did last week Tuesday, what are the soulish blessings? What are the spiritual blessings? Why is it that uh, the soulish blessing uh, is the foundation to assessing all around blessing? Praise the Lord. Tonight, as we continue, may the Lord bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Only one person is saying amen. amen. For the purpose of emphasis, when we talk about physical blessings, we need to know that physical blessings are for God's children. I did mention that even during the first outline, that these blessings are first and foremost for what? For God's children. Praise the Lord. And one thing we also need to know about our God and his blessings towards his children is that he intend for us to have the very best. Hello? So if anybody is telling you God doesn't want you to be blessed, it's a lie. Or the pit of hell. And if anybody is asking you to look for blessing from any other source other than from the almighty God, the person only wants to destroy you. I don't know whether it was here that somebody was saying it or at uh, Victory House during one of the ministration that you will see a young man who is he spending money or something like that and in the night he goes to eat another man feces with bread so as to be rich. I can see you squeezing your mouth and your nose. It's smelling, isn't it? Not even his own, no. Another man's own. Because he wants to be rich. That can only happen to someone who does not have the knowledge you are receiving? Or who had the knowledge and refused to apply it? Because it's a different thing for you to know. It's another thing to apply. Application is different entirely. And that's why we'll be looking at how we can turn on the blessings tonight. Because 
Many of us, some of the things we are saying, it's not strange to us. But we, we forget the fact that we must turn on the blessing. You may have, like I gave example the other day, you may have water in your tap. Quite all right. But the truth is, if you don't turn on the tap, the water does not flow. You have the water, but for it to flow, there must be turning on of the tap. If you have water in the tank of your house, if you don't turn it on, the water does not flow to the house. And that's where a lot of us are having issues. And apart from that, some of us may not know how to turn on the kind of blessing we want. You need some blessing. How do you turn it on? If, for instance, you need financial blessing or physical blessing, and you are just fasting and praying, you have missed it. You have missed it. Because for physical and financial blessing, turning it on is not praying. We are not saying prayer is not good, but that is not what will turn on financial blessing for you. It's not possible. So, we need to have some understandings. So that our life is blessed. So that we are not just talking about blessing, but there is manifestation. Where? In our lives. At least at my little level, I may bold to be able to take this kind of teaching because I can be I can talk experientially. I can talk how? Experientially. You cannot just look at me now and see my shoe looking up like this. And you say, look at the person where they tell us about blessing. No. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. We can see blessing through, through for your body. Praise the Lord. That's why when I was coming this evening, I didn't come with the Nissan Pathfinder. I came with the new one. So that. Bless <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. So that you can be provoked. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what are we trying to say? God wants the best for us. Tell your neighbor, God wants the best for me. It is not for you to manage or to suffer. No. God wants, when you talk about physical blessing, the best is for children of God. The best is for what? How do I know? Psalm 34 verse 10 says, The young lion do lack and suffer and hunger. But they that see the Lord shall not do what? Want any good thing. Praise the Lord. And if you read Psalm 103 verse 5. Psalm 103 verse 5 says, Who satisfied thy mouth? He satisfied your mouth with what? With good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. And that is the truth. When you see a life that is blessed. That is eating rightly. I mean, having rest, having comfort, that fellow will be advanced in age and will still be looking young. Am I correct? Because he's satisfied. He's satisfied. I cannot stop giving the, the testimony of the KBAC that I went to minister at his birthday. He was doing 95 years' birthday. 95. His eyes are still seen. Cha cha cha. He read the Bible. He is still standing strong, not using any stick. When it was time for me to pray for you, I said, Can you sit, sit down and let me pray for you? He said, No. I can't sit down to be prayed for. He got up and went on his knees. He said, Pastor, pray for me. 95. After we finish, I have to tell him, I say, God, you, see, you have to pray for me. I covet this age. Amen? 
The best is for the children of God. Say, He satisfied thy mouth with what? Good things. May it be our portion in the name of Jesus. I say, May it be our portion in the name of Jesus. God also promised us good health. Good health is for His children. These are physical blessings. Good health. It's not just that you are healthy. That's why we are laying emphasis. Because you can easily tell me, Pastor, but we have discussed physical soulish. Why this emphasis? The emphasis is because he wants the best for us. You are not just to live healthy, but you are to have a good health. You are to be full of vigor. You are to be full of energy. You are to be vibrant. And that's how I pray for somebody here tonight who might be having challenges in his or her head. God will perfect your head and restore head to you fully. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. And that's why he said in that Deuteronomy 7 15, he said, I will take sickness away from you. I will take what? He said, and the law will take away from thee all sickness. And we put none of the evil diseases of Egypt without nowhere upon thee, but we we'll lay them upon all them that do all that hate thee. Praise the Lord. And if you read Jeremiah 30, 17, he said, For I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wound, said the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. And when you read, Exodus 23, 25 says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. I will, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Brethren, may I announce to you, sir, by understanding and revelation, this is my personal working scripture. Personal what did I call it? Listen to me. This scripture, holding on to it alone, can turn everything around in your life. God only demands only one thing from you. What did he say? Serve me. Serve what? Eh? And ye shall serve the Lord your God. What will now happen? He said he will bless thy bread and thy water and will take sickness away. Meaning when you are serving God truly, when you are serving God correctly, you can hold God by his word. Say, Lord, I must not be sick. Lord, you must bless, you must bless my bread. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We also want to emphasize that solid blessing also belong to God's children. He wants us to prosper physically and to prosper soulishly. Just like we read in our in our um, uh, 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 test, third John two. Not only that, he also wants rest of mind. What do I call it? Do you know what rest of mind is? Rest of mind is a life free. Underline free of worries, free of anxiety, free of fear and free of the care for this world. I repeat. Well, how do I define rest of mind? A life free of what? It's not your heart. If you want to write it down, write it down. A life free of what? Number one. Huh? If you want to say it, raise your hand. Maybe because I'm not hearing. Huh? Worries. Uh -huh. Anxiety. Uh -huh. Fear. And then, cares of this world. For you to have rest of mind, you must free yourself of worries, anxiety, fear, all kinds of fear, and the care for this world. Ah, what will become of me now? What will become of my children? Hey, why am I going to do this? See, sir, if you are still panicking, and you, you, you will, oh my God. You will not have rest of mind. Besides that, the last time with Toddy. Hello? Covetousness is sin, isn't it? 
Ovechastan is seen. Yes. It's two ways. Because I said spiritually, you can go. You can go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The truth is that covetousness when it comes to physical things is works of flesh according to Galatians chapter 5. But when it comes to spiritual things, you have divine express permission. You have what? Divine express permission to covet earnestly the best gift. You see your Bible. First Corinthians 12 31. He said, But covet earnestly the best gift, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. When it comes to spiritual things, you should be insatiable. You must hunger. You must, you must long for it. You must go all out when it comes to spiritual blessings. Is somebody with me tonight? You must do what? Go all out. That is why I say pray without ceasing. He said, he that too, have ye asked me not? He said, ask till thy joy is. That is express permission to be covetous when it comes to spiritual things. That is why you can never overpray. You can never do what? You can never overfast. Go and study that book by Robert Liadon, God's Generous. There are some of them. Can't remember the names of Scarlet now. Live fasted life year in, year out. Every day, 365 days of the year. All oh, fasting. Hello. When somebody asks you to do that one now, what are you going to say? This pastor is a killer. Hello. Even your Holy Spirit tells you, and you know it's Holy Spirit, you pretend not to be hearing. Say, now make Jesus. I will come and die. But not fasting does not kill. It doesn't. Even at our own small level, if fasting kills, we will have died 10 times or 100 times before now. But do you know what? Maybe when we get to turn it on, the spiritual blessing we understand better when you begin to accept these blessings you yourself you'll be willing to do more God will take us to that level I say God will take us to that level we are to strive strongly to improve spiritually every one of us must improve spiritually is a must that is why you can never say you have arrived when it comes to spiritual things. There is no way God is using you. There is no level, there is no, there is no particular level God may be using you that you think you are anything. No, sir. When I saw the God generous, there are some of them that by the time they get to a particular city, People will be weeping for their sin without them opening their mouth to preach. <laughs> praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. I remember even at our so small level in those days. When I was when I fasted for one year, I don't need to lay hand or say receive from the altar. All I need to do is to walk along the eye. You see people falling under the anointing left and right. Praise the Lord. And that's why I've always told us there's no superstar in the kingdom. There's no what? No, 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 no. What you have is super sacrifice. For God is no respecter of person. You pay the price, he give it to you. No looking back. That's why in Acts chapter 10, 
Cornelius paid the price, fasting, giving arms. By the time Peter was sent for in Joppa and he came to his house, his entire household, while Peter here opened his mouth, we were all baptized. And Peter was shocked. That you mean Gentiles also? Say, now I know that God is no respecter of persons. God is not. God is not a partial God. And that's why I believe strongly whenever our Father the Lord pray for us. My, you are my children, you'll be, you be greater than me. It's possible, but the only thing is that how many of the children are ready to pay the price? He is paying the price, the things are, things are happening, and he continues paying the price, and the gaps are widening between him and the children, because the children are not ready to pay the price. For some of us, if God should use us to heal ordinary headache, oh, what is pastor preaching? You begin to no, sir. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. So, how to turn on the blessings? That's where we are going now. If we are able to finish, that means we're concluding this series tonight. But if we are not able to, then we'll take it from there. How to turn on the blessings? We told us there are physical blessings, soulish blessings, and spiritual blessings. So they all have different taps where you turn them on. Praise the Lord. For those of us that have water heater in our bedrooms, you know when you turn on your tap, there is a way you turn it on it will produce you hot water. Am I correct? That is the way you also turn it on. It produces what? Cold water. Praise the Lord. And for those of us that have some, some type of fridges that have both fridge and um, freezer, there is, there is where you put your glass cup. It will give you cold water. There is another place you put your glass cup. It produces you ice cube. Hmm. Ice cube will just be falling cr -cr 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 inside. It is where you turn on. That will determine what you want to get. Praise the Lord. I have one physical blessing. You have to. You have to. We need it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We do what? Physical blessing can be turned on by number one letting the law dwell in your home. Letting what? Anytime we preach and we are talking about how the ark of God was brought to the house of Obededo and his story changed within three months. Many of us will say louder, amen. But how many of us are ready to allow house fellowship in our houses? How many of us have house fellowship in our houses? You have house fellowship in your house, wave you at me, in your house. Where you are, wave at me. The way you are waving your hand, I'm not saying stand. Let me see them. I don't mean in your own flat, in your own house, not that in your block. How many of us? You ask absolute in your house. In your house. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sit down, everybody. How many of us want physical blessings? <laughs> Hello. Why are you not turning it on? It's not a joking matter. I am a living witness. And I have some people here that can testify. This is why for now there is no our fellowship in my house it because my children are not on ground and we couple with the assignment member will get there they will meet the house locked that's why currently there's no house in my house but when my children were around 
There was half lotion in my house. And it was bubbling. The coordinator said, confirm. <laughs> it's almost like a parish. That's the truth. <laughs> My house ownership is on, and I come back home, and I see volume of sleepers. I think I want to enter a mosque. <laughs> but that's where they enter without sleepers. Beloved, take it from here tonight. Take it from where? And test God. But Aluga, can you please stand? He is the house fellowship coordinator. Don't just listen to this, this teaching for listening sake. Even if it is one room you are living, you can welcome God there by making your house a house fellowship center. It's the beginning. There is no how God dwells in your house. People gather in your house to pray and demon will be there. So if you are seated here, sir, if you are seated here, ma, and you want to experiment, you want to prove can allow God in my house, don't know blessing for me. See him and register your name. I'll be glad to come and inaugurate the house fellowship center. If I'm informed. Very key. Be seated, sir. Obedidom allowed the ark. When they brought the ark, he didn't add that to put it, to put the ark in his backyard. It was in his house. Have I told us here before the story of the man that wants to travel? Whether I said they will not pray, and he prayed only inside the boot or something like that. You remember? I now had accident. And there was crate or egg in the boot. And the, the vehicles were asserted. It was only where the egg is, where prayer was offered. That is where nothing happened. Egg did not break. Some of us want Jesus in our house. You want Jesus in your house. I say, You want Jesus in your house. Shout hallelujah. Some of us even workers. We have not opened our house for our fellowship. You invite God to your house and see whether the story of Obededom is true or not. Read 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11. Number two, paying of tithes and offering. <laughs> Hello? Many of us don't want to hear it. Many of us are unfaithful. And you want the physical blessing. It doesn't follow like that. Turn it on. I pay your tithe and offering. Not paying once a while. But paying consistently and constantly. Pay how? No amount is too small to pay tight on, and no amount is too big to pay tight on. Beloved brethren, many of us are church changing ourselves of the blessings God has in stock because the blessings are there, but we refuse to turn it on. God can't lie. Say, will a man rob God? Verse 8 of that Malachi 3. Say, yeah, ye have robbed me. But ye say, we are in, have we robbed thee? 
He's saying tithes and offering. The verse 10 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now. Hear with, see the Lord of hosts. If I will not serve, I know a lot of people who have been subjecting this teaching on tithing to a lot of controversy. But you know the taste of the pudding in eating it. Me, I will not debate tight with anybody. But you stand side by side with me and tell me to my face I have practiced it, it did not work for me. And I will tell you I have practiced it it work for me and it's still working for me and it will continue to work for me. Turn it on. Don't rob God of your tithe. Don't allow any challenges in your life take away your tithe to be spent by you. Rather, allow the challenge to wait and pay tight and you see whether God will not take care of the challenge. And what do you call challenges? Manifestation of devourers. These are the things God himself will have rebuked for you before they raise their ugly head. But because you refuse to turn on the tap, you refuse to turn it on, the blessing is there hanging. But you have not opened the heavens. Paying your tithes and offering is key to turning on the blessing over your life. And refuse to pay, what are you doing? You turn off the blessing. Many have turned off the blessings over their life because they failed to pay. Sir, there is no amount of justification and excuse that you want to give for not be faithful in your tithe. The truth is, you have only turned off the blessing. If you like, say, God understand. If you like, tell God, say, how can my child be hungry and I should drop the money for tithe? Brother, I'm challenging us tonight. Enough is enough. Stop changing your life or stop changing yourself. Turn on the blessing. Full blast. What did I say? Full blast. And you see what is going to happen. Let me stop here. We'll continue from tight next week. Take it to soulish and spiritual. Brethren, the Bible says the letter kill it. But the spirit give it what? He said the word that I speak to you, they are what? They are spirit. And they are what? Life. It's not about the outline you are carrying. It's about the understanding and the revelation behind his word. Shall we rise? There are some things I will still say on tight next Tuesday if Jesus tarries. Because if we fail to teach us the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. If you like, say you are a businessman and you are just dropping anything you like and you say you are paid that you only deceive yourself. The only unfortunate thing is that you are not opportune to have seen what you are losing. You are only able to see the little you are gaining by the little you are doing. May the Lord open our eyes. If you have any question, write it down. Put it in the usher's basket. We'll treat it next Tuesday if Jesus tarry in his coming. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh.
please accept us and our offerings in Jesus' name. Open your heavens over us tonight. Bless us abundantly. And let this be the least we will give ever, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for accepting us and our offerings, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Please let us be seated as we listen to the following announcements. Good morning, Holy Spirit continues tomorrow morning. Let's celebrate Jesus. The time is 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And it runs from, fr from Monday to Friday. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. in the evening, we'll be having our home fellowship. For those of us that house the house on Wednesdays, please let us endeavor to attend and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. On Thursday at 6.30 p.m., we'll be having faith clinic. And it is from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Let's come and pray and the Lord will do something concerning our situations in Jesus' name. For workers in the house, this Friday we'll be having our workers' prayer meeting. The time is 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Compulsory for all workers. I want to also encourage issue this. Please let us pass this message across to those in our departments. As we come, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. On Saturday at 4.30 p.m. is evangelism. One of the ways also we can turn on the showers of blessings is to win souls. Because the Bible says, he that winneth a soul is wise. Praise the Lord. On Sunday, we'll be having our three celebration services. Let us endeavor to come. And as we do, God in his mercies will reach out to us in Jesus' name. Shall we rise as we give God all the glory? Let's return all the thanks unto him for his word that he has sent to us tonight. Thank him because the Lord will perfect his word concerning us in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to say thank you. You brought us safely. It is time for us to go back home. Lead us home safely in the name of Jesus. For eventual Lord, I please you to come tonight. Please remember us in Jesus' name. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Blessed be your name in the highest. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Let us share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely.